Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Okay, nice. Okay, everything works fine. It would be nice if you said hi in the chat so I can see if it works properly. Oh, nice. You already did. Hey, Diva. Hey, Gallus, Nick. Okay, we have two fishes, I think. Yep. Okay, let's limp. Spot control a bit. Okay, let's. I'm going to stab right away. Probably bar barrel the turn, depending on what turn it is. But okay, so this is probably the worst turn that you can possibly get. We'll have to check it, and maybe if he checks back, we can bluff on the river. But it's really annoying. Like we can only fold that many hands. I don't think he's folding a four, so I'll check back. If it was a queen, for example, I would probably bet, but now I don't expect him to fold the four. <clears throat> okay. You don't need to win every hand, you know? Let me know about the volume as well, but last stream it was fine. Okay, let's call. Um, okay, we have backdoors, but the sizing is a bit too big. If, if it was half a pot, I would probably float and <clears throat> maybe hope to see a good turn that we can call on. Okay, this is just a jam, not much to do here. Let's, let's not forget to tag them. I mean, they didn't do anything crazy yet. Maybe they're not fishes, but I haven't seen them before. Okay, so this guy's fish for certain. This guy too. Well, we figured that out. Okay, I'm going to call here. Hopefully he's not trapping and not shoving here, but most of the time it should be fine. We have a good opportunity to flop something nice, but this is not it. It hits the small blind range heavily. There's no options to bluff or do anything crazy, so we'll have to let it go. Okay, now I'm curious what he's... Okay, he checked back. Make your guesses. What, what do they have? Like, I bet this guy has, like, a King-10, King... Wow, what? He had King-Jack, he bets... I'm not sure if it was for value, but... Wow. I mean, and he... Got snap called by a jack. I mean, the, the call was fine, but the bet. These people are crazy. Okay, nice. Great. Okay, so. Have a huge stack against the fish. He shoves. We're flipping at best. Um, I'll let it go. I think having a huge stack. I mean, if it was like a few blinds shorter, I would definitely just call. Without even thinking about it, but now 13 big blinds. I think we still have room to exploit him and earn some more chippy. But yeah, I'll bet big. There's a lot of draws. I don't think he has an ace that many that many times. So I want to protect my nines. <clears throat> okay, let's limp. As always, guys, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, okay, so we can call here and we can bluff on the river. The problem is he's quite, he's quite, quite loose. We saw how he played his king jack, so I'll bet big. 
I'll bet you 100 chips. That should scare him away. We, we just want him to fold a 6. Wow, shit. Okay. I wonder if he... Like, did he hit a straight or what, but... Ah, god damn it. Okay, one fish, one reg. Let's iso him. Um, if I had a weaker hand, I would probably bet bigger. I'll bet really small here. Okay, nice. It's an easy decision. Albert Einstein, <laughs> do students in your school switch to other formats, for instance, MTT or heads up cash? No, we don't. Um, because it's just, it's way more profitable to just stick to one format. There are some people I think that might switch eventually, you know, from like most entities, right? But I don't think like anyone plays or learns how to play cash anymore that much because online cash is, I I'm not sure how bad it is, but it seems you need to sell, field select really, really hard, and it's quite complicated, at least to my knowledge. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't know that many cash players. I know MTT players, but not that many cash players. It seems that MTT and spins is way more profitable and stable and easier to just grind because you don't have to select as much. There's way more options to play because i know that cash game players sometimes like they go to like private rooms and stuff like that just to get an edge just to get fishes so but yeah it, it might be more profitable than spins but i have no idea but yeah we don't switch most of the time i mean for some people i know some players that just don't like mtts right they just like spins and that's it. Even though I like MTTs, I don't like online MTTs that much. And I don't, I can't imagine myself like grinding MTTs for a living because it's, you need a lot of free time to do it, right? You cannot just sit and play for an hour. You need to commit your whole day for, to it. So, and in spins, you know, if, I don't, if I'm not feeling well or whatever, I can play for an hour or two or even 10 minutes. And I say, well, oh, I don't want to play today, right? And I just quit. But MTTs, you don't have that privilege, right? It's way more restricting and... And yeah, so... But maybe, I mean, I would like to play live MTTs for a living, but you need a huge bankroll for it and you need to travel a lot as well. I think after a while you get tired of that too. Okay, so we, we cannot like get value out of that many hands and the stack to pot ratio is one to one. So I'll check, hopefully he decides to bluff or whatever. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Could have shoved, of course, but I mean, in the long run, it's plus EV to do this, but but yeah, we were unlucky then that time. Are there any good books that are rele re relevant to on today's games, or at least have some useful advice? In my opinion, if it's strategy-based advice, it's pretty much useless. I mean. The game like started evolving really quickly after the solvers came into place, right? So it's just not worth reading books. It's better to buy a course or to join a stable. Progress is way faster and I mean I think that like if you buy and read a book, it's fine. 
but you won't be crushing <laughs> like by reading one book, right? If you if you're like completely new and you at least want to break even, I think yeah, it's a good idea if you have it laying around. But just like focusing on the books, I don't think so. Like only uh, the psychology side is like decent, right? I, th I think it's the the only book that is probably relevant is Mental Game of Poker. I think that's what it's called. So that book is decent. Because it, it, it's not about strategy, right? It's about... Mm. It's about the psychology and what you... What your mindset should be when... When playing, right? So... I think there is one that's called Low Stakes Grinders or what, whatever. That a lot of people praised, but... And it's more of a strategy book. I'm trying to find it, but maybe it's the Grinders Manual. No, but yeah. Uh, either way, I, I would just stick to courses. Even like just watching content on YouTube from like streamers that are crushing it is better than just reading a book. I mean, if you're com as I said, if you're completely, completely new to the game, it's fine to understand the essentials. But for most part, uh, it's just not worth it. Okay, let's check back. Uh, what's the arrow in spins? So it really depends on like what limit and like what type of spins you're playing if you're playing the the faster the spins the lower the roi but you'll put in volume so there's the difference right so if, let's say if you're playing on poker stars instead of Vinamax, right because Vinamax has faster format even on, on the regular spins right the levers are, are faster so uh on poker stars your roi will prob probably be higher than on Minimax, but on Minimax it will have higher wall volume, so it evens out. But let's say on 50s here, I would say it's if you're crushing the limit, it's between um, two and a four percent. So it really comes down how good you are, right? So and what limit you're playing. The lower the limit, the higher your ROI will be, right? So in, probably in tens, you, you can have I don't know six percent ROI or something like that. So yeah, you can, I cannot like, if you look at the high stakes, the ROI will probably be quite low compared, like if you're playing 500 ones, the, if, if, the, if your ROI is like 1%, it's like good enough, right? Uh, okay, let's, it's an easy poll. Does morning sessions make, make a big difference in profit uh, than playing at night? Uh, in my opinion, yes, especially on Vinamax, because I, I mean, I tested, <clears throat> the morning sessions i mean it's I, I never played on the mornings right where you wake up really early and you grind it out for me it's i could i never tested it for prolonged periods of times but for the most part most players perform worse when they're playing during the day because there's not that much free money especially in the max right right a lot of the money and profit comes from fishes basically just dumping their whole stack away and when you're playing like in during the day or in the, or in the morning the main problem is that they're way more conservative right they're not drunk most of the time they're way more patient there's not that many crazy players so there's a huge gap between how the, the fishes play right <clears throat> okay let's min raise and we're folding to a shove Really unfortunate run out. But I mean, there are some people that even on high stakes are making really great profits playing during the day. For me, it's like, it's harder to focus. And I got so used to playing during the night that it's so unusual that, I mean, to completely adjust, I would probably have to do force myself to wake up and like have a 
good schedule for like i don't know three months to switch completely and get the results and like compare them to playing during the night so but my play style is like i'm really good at exploiting fishes but the fishes that i'm exploiting are the players at night and they act and, I, and as i said before it's completely different to the fishes that are playing during the day so i would have to switch my strategy a bit as well Damn it. <clears throat> we got there. Okay. Hmm. Not hitting those flops nicely today. That should be a call, but... Mm. Didn't feel like it. Okay, this will be interesting if this guy shoves. What's the dem demographics of Gwena Max? Mainly Europe? Uh, mainly Europe, so... Mainly France. Uh, <laughs> mainly France uh, or Spain. Like Spanish or French people, but... A lot of the regulars are Lithuanians and uh, Russians, so basically that. The regs will be probably from other countries and uh, like I, I, I don't have a complete list of what countries are allowed to play on Venomax, but it's definitely France, it's definitely Spain. And I think it's like these two countries are like 80% of the whole player base. I would not be surprised if that's the case. Maybe only French people take up to 80%, but... Who knows? I think I'm not sure if this is a call, but it seems like it. So yeah, not running that well today. I mean, <laughs> if I was playing without the EV, would be nice. But yeah, we're losing a shit ton of chips here. How much games you played in total? 100k? Um, let me check. I think it will be close, but... Okay, so I've played not that many, 75,000 games in total in three years. I mean, you know, now I'm playing like at least like what, 40,000 a year, right? So because the format is faster, I play more table. The first two years were really slow for me. Because I was playing only two tables and never like adding more tables, and I was sticking to um, quality over quantity. So I never played like I would play like mostly like, one and a, and a half thousand games, but that's about it when I was playing on Poker Stars. So, <clears throat> ouch! Can you explain the difference between fifties and hundreds? What about spins on stars? Uh. If like the difference between them, like on on Vinamax, right? Only on Vinamax, the it's quite huge. Like stack to fish ratio is crazy, like bad in hundreds. You need to like battle the regs a lot, and the other problem is that regs they, they play at least six tables. Where in fifties, right, the field is way wider, and there's uh, you'll get fishes no matter how bad the field is. 
Like if you play six tables, it's really, really unusual on 50s to not get any fishes, at least on one table. On hundreds, you would play like two hours without any fishes. Not like, okay, two hours is a bit excessive, but you can play like for an hour <clears throat> and you won't get any fishes if like other pe people are playing eight tables, for example, right? So it's a huge difference in, in these terms. And skill-wise, yeah, the regs are definitely better. And uh, in 50s regs, do way more mistakes. And... Okay, uh, what about... And what about... Sp I have... I'm not that aware about the level of players and the field on stars. I mean, especially in the high stakes. Now, I think, like, when they changed the regback system, uh, like, a month ago or so, uh, the lower limits, like, fives and tens, got way easier just because a lot of regs could not stay there because the rayback is way lower so you need a higher gpu to play so now it's definitely way easier to play there you need but you'll like you'll make probably the same amount like they used to before but 25s might get a little tougher because probably people will put on more tables but yeah i, I have no idea about the hundreds and 50s for that matter because not that many people play on poker stars on our tables, so i, I don't have that info how do you study poker these days what tools do you use and how much time do you allocate for learning so i don't study that much i never did uh, to be honest so mainly uh, i get private coachings right or group coachings where i show my hands and discuss about it that helped me a lot like this was the most important tool for me to learn how to play the game like how to crush i mean it's essential i think if you don't have like if you're in a stable or let's say you're playing on your own if you don't have private coachings you're basically wasting a lot of time by studying just on your own because let's say you're ha you're ha you have a leak right and to find that leak by your own it will take you i don't know let's say a month where a coach can just say hey dude you're doing this is not right just stop doing it and you fix it like that, right? So it saves a lot of time. You can improve way faster. The other one is learning, like when you are just playing, basically. When, since I started playing more tables, my game improved dramatically because you see more spots, you see more, more tendencies, and, and so on. So, but talking about the tools, so I'm only like, like I, I only use one tool. It's pure GTO. You can check it out. You can have a free trial. The Nightbot's sending all the links uh, on Twitch chat, or you can just go to Sam Staking or PureGTO.com. You can check it out. It has a thing, a free trial of one week. But yeah. So basically. But I, I don't like use the solver that much, you know. It's not not that crazy. Yes, I mean most of the money comes from the fishes. I'm doing fine with regs. I could definitely be get better. But yeah, I solve with your hands occasionally, but definitely don't, I don't spend a shit ton of time. And so I have a, at least one coaching during the week, and it's enough for me to keep at the skill level. I mean I'm improving at least for the past year, right? And I haven't been studying much. Of course, I would probably improve way more if I studied a lot more. But yeah. Uh, what would uh, what would be a reasonable amount of binds if you're not in the pool? Uh, it depends if you're playing on Minimax or or Poker Stars. If you're playing on Poker Stars, you'll need less because the variance is way lower. The multipliers are spread out spread out way more equally, right? So the variance is lower. On Minimax, I would be, and it really depends on how hard you're crushing the limit and um, like what limit are you playing, right? So the higher the limit, the more binds you'll need. But let's say you play tens or twenty fives, so I think you should be quite comfortable with two hundred, three hundred binds if you're if you're not counting the living expenses. But I think it should be fine. Like 200 vines should be for most part fine but yeah and, but to be really safe 300 vines but there, like there's no reason not to play in the pool like it's, it's just plain stupid not to do it right it's just you're 
throwing money away in the long run. So, yeah. What are you doing, guys? For example, me, I'm, I'm doing great this month. What about you? I love the, the, the okay. The chat is way more engaging this week. Just nice. It's always nice to have someone to talk around. You know. Okay. Think some high stakers use GTO tools on other screens while playing easy cheat. Well, first of all, like the known softwares that you're able just to buy, you know, like I don't know, pure GTO for example, or uh, GTO Wizard or whatever, right? They have security measures implicated in them, so it's not that like you can even though it, like let's say you would use a GTO Wizard or pure GTO or whatever on the side. Like solve hands in real time you cannot like if you're playing six tables you won't have time for it right so it's not worth it but do some people use rta or like real time assistance custom softwares and so on it's like i cannot like say that about any single person so like i might suspect someone but it's you know it's hard to accuse someone when you don't have the proof, right? No one plays like a complete GTO bot. Everyone deviates no matter how good they are. So, but like, I don't think that, I don't think that it's worth to even think about it that much. Like if I start like, thinking that everyone is cheating, right? Or at least some people are cheating. It doesn't help me in the slightest, right? It just probably stresses me out and pisses me off, which uh, ruins my game, and that's about it. So there's no point. Um, why didn't you shove eight five suited twelve effective versus Aaron? I think I just missed the spot. I was talking too much and been raised out of autopilot you know oh we got two fishes which is nice did not expect that yeah that was a shove for sure okay so this is a really tricky spot mm. I want to inflate the pot as much as possible though. Okay, um he called. We are in position, so I'll bet really small. Nice. <clears throat> What are your thoughts on cartels when professionals avoid each other? I mean, in like I have mixed feelings about it because, well, for one part, right, it's it's a smart way to play the game, right? It's a more profitable way to play the game. You don't bleed money and so on. Uh, in in other sense, it's not, it's not cheating. Definitely it's not cheating, but yeah, it's it's fine. The problem is it's like when you're a professional as well and you want to get into a cartel, right? It's really hard and like it's not a natural way to play the game, like where you just battle it out and you're good to go. You, you need to earn your spot, so I think it's way harder, but
yeah so as i said i have mixed opinion about it i don't like i don't like it that much but i don't hate it either i mean it's like from logical perspective as i said it just makes sense to do that right simple as that like uh, like the fishes would can think that it's annoying so How the fuck do people play six tables? There are so many things to track if you are playing against players you haven't seen before. It's muscle memory mostly, and you start noticing the patterns of fishes. So it's like, no matter... The, i never seen this player before, right? Let's say this guy. He still like comes into one of the like patterns like of fishes. Okay, so he isobs a lot, right? He's probably more aggressive. He's more willing to let it go and so on and so on. And I'm not trying to fold any pair here. I'm just trying to fold his. Well, here seven, here seven. But yeah, it's just muscle memory for me. It's, it seemed impossible as well. But nowadays, it's. I mean, it's just ninety percent of the game is just muscle memory, and you just click the buttons that you have to, right? You don't even think about it twice. And sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, it definitely costs me money because I'm out of focus or I didn't keep up with everything that was going on, but it's it's not as hard as you think it is. If you're playing for a while, it's just become natural. You know, there's some people who play 20 tables in nitros, you know, so it's, for me, it seems impossible as well, but they do it, so, you know, okay, let's check back and we might bet the turn. We don't need to bet large, we don't have any like strong holdings. Hopefully we're good. Nice. He called the Jack Deuce. Okay, so now he comes into like okay, so this guy for example, right? He's loose. He's calling the Jack Deuce without any equity whatsoever, right? He can only get Jack. So he's crazy, he's overplaying his ranges and so on. Okay, we're calling. And he seems quite passive too. Um I'll pop control it. He might be trapping here, but probably he has nothing. And he didn't seem like the type of player who would be really aggressive. Post flop. Okay, he bets. And let's just call. He checks back. He might have an aid. The problem is he's not folding. I can jam, but we still beat some of the holdings that he has. He might have a jack too that he's not folding. So, okay, we beat an ace king, right? So. Even though, let's say, he had to see bet, he, we can get an image, right? He's into a pattern where this guy only bets his value hands, the good hands, when he hits the flops, right? At least for now. So all the decisions and the strategy are adjust to that, right? Yeah, he, he will be a, a bit different than other players that do that, right? Might bluff more or less, but most of the time it's just... And I think that that's the difference between like low and mid stakes players and high stakes players, right? Where if you play, if you have, if you have, if you struggle to analyze a single person or put him in one of the boxes, you will struggle to climb limits, in my opinion. I think it's essential to be able to analyze and put labels on people quite quickly. For you, for you to be profitable and make adjustments quickly. Okay, let's check. He bets 3x, so I think he has a lot of pocket pairs here. But I'm not checking back one more time. Okay, an ace. He doesn't have that many aces, though. He's a station, so... I don't think he's folding that nine ever.
Okay, so what did they have? Okay, he folded. Ouch. Not running that well. But I mean, I'm, I've not been running that well these past two days, but these past few days. But overall, I ran great in the first two weeks of the month, so I definitely can't complain. I have to fix my sleeping schedule because it's crazy. I woke up like three hours ago, which is, and like when I wake wake up that late, like my whole day is fucked. I can't do shit. Like I mean, I don't have energy. It's hard to start grinding. And I go. <laughs> so yeah, it's just really annoying. And it's so hard, like, today, I, like, if I wake up at, like, 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, right, it's fine for me. But, like, I have a good day, right? But the problem is, uh, the problem is that when I wake up that late, my day, like, it seems that I already, like, have had to do so many things. And I would put my alarm at, like, 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock. And I just sleep through it and it pisses me off. Uh, I'm just starting out in spinning go format. What kind of preflop range should I use? Um, I mean, if you don't have anything, I would suggest you like try out uh, the pure G download pure GTO, right? And you can use a trainer there. I'm not sure if it's available in a trial version, but it should be, I think. And you can check the ranges. <clears throat> I hope so. But yeah, I'm not sure if there are free ranges anywhere. I mean, try to Google it up. Let me check. Like, all the basic ranges that you can probably get for free should probably be enough if you're just starting out. I mean, I started out by, by buying a shitty course for like 50 bucks, but it was, the, the ranges were good enough for me to be profitable, right? Uh, spin and go ranges, okay, let's check it out. I mean, you have to Google that up, but I mean, yeah, you can you can buy them cheaply, but it, like for like twenty bucks a month subscriptions and so on. Just Google it out, like, or join the stable. That's it. But keep some more to pursue the life. Yeah, I'm gonna be super into the life. Still, cause I'm not better than you. There is no other way to get that. You just gotta keep on. Some people say nitros are more profitable. Do you agree with variance is much higher? So on Minimax, I think, yeah, the nitros are more profitable. But the, again, the problem is the cartels. And like, even though let's say I would make 40% more playing nitros, I'm not sure if I could do it. It's just so tedious because you just have to play a shit ton of tables. You're just like basically in, in a factory worker, you know, just click buttons constantly without even like thinking about it you know everything's on on, on autopilot so i would I, I tried like playing nitros only in six tables and it's like i really hated it but i mean you know if i had to switch i would probably i would probably do it and i would it would be fine after a few months but for now uh but yeah nitro is based usually is more profitable if you can get the field in because you and Especially on Venomax because 
you play a huge volume, so the chances of hitting a jackpot are way higher, right? So in the long run, if you play, let's say, play 10 years, and you play 10 years of, of regular spins and nitros, like, <clears throat> the total amount of money will differ, there will be, there will be a huge difference, right? Because you will hit jackpots and so on. You, I mean, you should be hitting jackpots. <clears throat> Hi, what is good to be on 25 Venomax reg speed on, to move up to 50s? I think, mm, like, to start sh sh a shot, it would be probably be around 50, 55, to start, sh sh like, shooting, right? <clears throat> but if you want to crush 50s, I mean, at least 55 would be nice, in my opinion. I mean, I haven't played and can only check the results, but I can see that mostly people have a, a bit above 50. But I know there are some people that are crushing with like 57, 58 HPV and playing a lot of the volume. So it's definitely possible to have higher ones. But if you want to move up, you can definitely do it. Hit the gym when you wake up. It really helps going. Yeah, I was like, I really like planned to start going to the gym. But the problem is uh, I'm going away uh, the next month traveling a lot so i didn't start with the membership because i knew i have i will like skip a whole month but it's the the problem not is not it's not just starting the day off the problem is just waking up earlier you know when i i can only wake up if there's really important thing that i have to do for example i don't know go somewhere or whatever if that's not the case like waking up like an hour or two earlier it's like such a pain in the ass and it's almost impossible for me to do. Um, okay, I'm not a big fan of probing here. Okay, let's check back. I completely phased out the whole game. I have no idea how I ended up in a heads up against this guy with this type of stack, but hopefully I was profitable. Shit. I really need to go to the toilet and this doesn't help. But of course it's nice to get a full stack of Okay, well it's not shove here. Let's play slow game. Hopefully he shoves up with his hand or Seems like a nit. Should be easy to get folds from him. So I'll start betting right away. Game electric. What course or channels would you recommend for spin and goes besides the sim staking? I mean. I cannot say any other stables, you know, so, and, but not that many, I don't think, like, maybe there's some courses that you can buy now, but it's just, I mean, it's just not worth it. I mean, if you're just, just starting off, like, you're not a profitable player, then it's probably worth it, because you're just starting from ground zero, and you just want to, you don't want to commit to a stable or whatever, so you just, um, so you just buy a course or whatever. But if you're looking in the long term, like getting into a stable, preferably one like SM staking that gives a lot of private coachings is the best option. It definitely, like it, you progress so fast compared to other means, right? So it just, okay. Uh, when do you go to sleep? Right now I go to sleep at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning, which is annoying. I usually go to sleep at like six. Okay, I'm going to the toilet, be right back.
Okay, back. Microphone is on, right? Okay. Uh, how many people are in your stable, and what's the contract duration you join? So, the contracts are individual, but now I, I don't. I am not sure how much people you have because I'm not the guy who is responsible for like you know, recruiting people or whatever. But I think it's above. The last time I heard the count, it's above a hundred, probably like one twenty, something like that. I don't want to, but it should be somewhere around the, that number. Uh, the contract duration, I mean, it's based on games, right? So um, for starters, I think it's like thirty thousand or so. I'm not not quite quite sure. But if you're like advanced player, let's say you're already beating twenty fives or whatever. Contracts are, of course, better. You can negotiate the terms and whatever. But the longer the contract, the better deal you will get most of the time. The shorter the contract, the worse deal you will get. So that's it. So yeah, it, I mean, it's a fair, let's say it's 30,000 games, but on Minimax, the, the games are divided by two. So it's not like you can finish a contract if you're playing on Minimax in one year it's quite hard but playing nitros it's quite fast chat is really engaging today which is nice but i understand you know, i understand that i'm talking so much i'm just playing on such an autopilot i haven't like even thought about the hand i, I see that where i don't i shouldn't and yeah it's horrible but oh well uh, okay, let's check back. GTO checks here. So. Sixty-three GPV and twenty-five is minimum to move and fifty. Do you know a lot of people who have sixty-three GPV? I mean, if you, I mean, if you're playing like I don't know a thousand games a month, sure. But if you're like playing I don't know four or five thousand games a month, sixty-three. I, I, I never seen a graph like that. I've seen graphs that are like that have like sixty or like. 557, but they're completely crushing it, right? Filling huge volumes as well, so... I mean, I haven't played 25s in a long time, so... I'll call here, and hopefully he stops the turn. Yeah, let's go. We'll bet really big right away, and shove the river. But yeah, 63 the minimum. Oh, come on, come on, stop putting these aces into aces situations where I'm completely dominated. Okay, after this game, I'll check the graph, which is probably like minus 100 GPV or whatever. I don't remember a time where I had a good graph to show on stream. Okay, it's not that bad. It's minus 67 GPV in 8 games, which I definitely expected worse. It's probably somewhere between 150 and 200 GPV, but no, it's fine. Like, we didn't make that many mistakes or whatever, but... So, does getting into SM staking means that the player gets full funding and keeps a percentage of the winnings? Yes, that's how staking works. So, they provide you with bankroll, right? It doesn't matter. You get into a pool as well. And like why I'm I'm on a stake, right? Is because if you want to especially move sh shot to higher limits, you need a huge bankroll, right? You need higher bankroll. So that's one key. But uh, the coachings are really important. Of course, the better you get, the coachings are less and less important. But when you start off, I missed a, uh, a bet on the turn. Shit. 
Now we can occupy here. Um, so, yeah, basically, you get everything that you need to play, and yeah, you, you you get the percentage. Like the standard contract, if you're just starting off, it's 50 50, so half the, half the profit you make is uh, going to the stable, right? Yeah, but that's how it works. What are the prereqs of joining your pool? Can I, for, can I, for example, join if I play tennis? Yes, you can. You can see the pricings on uh, our website. Uh, just go to smstaking.com and we'll see. I think it's probably two binds, may maybe. I think it's less, a month. That's about it. Why are you betting that much? I mean, I can have two pairs or whatever. It doesn't matter that much. I'm going to level off. Okay, some pool and you can find the anything is there but it's quite simple so yeah if you're playing uh 10s 25s it's 20 euros a month to join the pool but that's about it uh, okay that's a big sizing breaking gg is absurd i would love I would, how many games do you need to play to get reasonable break back? To be honest, I have no clue, but I think if you... If you're playing, I mean, at least three, four thousand games a month, probably. But I, they change the PVI so much that it's quite unstable, so... You need to luck as well. Oh, come on. Why couldn't you give me an ace? Come on, just check back. Maybe we're good? Nice. But yeah, you get the coaching. I think the coaching is the most valuable part of any... And I know that SM Staking is one of the few uh, stables that offer that m many private coaching sessions that you can get. I don't think... In, like, what I heard from other stables, you definitely don't get as much coaching as you do here. Uh, what chip win you have in 25s total? I mean, I've played before they changed the limits, right? I mean, the levels. And I have no idea now, but I think it, it was above 60, definitely. But yeah, I have no idea now. Like, but, but it doesn't matter because it was for the changes, so now it's completely different. So I would have to play for like three months to get a decent sample and say, hey, guys, listen, I can completely crush it or whatever. And this is the GPV you can get. But but if you can like, completely crush a limit, it's just not worth staying there. Now you need to move up and that's it. In a sense, taking how many chips you need to move to 25 to 50 and 50 to 100. So it's not. Uh, so we switched from the chip EV system to spin EV plus rake back system. So I'm not sure, but it's probably like from 25 to 50, is, I think it's 600 binds. I think it's the same amount of binds from 25 to 50 and from 50 to 100. It's, I think it's 600 binds spin EV plus rake back. So you need to make from to move to, from 25s to 50s you need to make uh, maybe i'm wrong but i think it's 600 let me check so you need 15000 in spinning me plus rake back profit and 25s to move up to 50s <clears throat> Like the system is less punishing in a way it lets you shoot shoot up easier but mm. Every game today is just, oh no, the start was bad. 
most of the time when I run bad during the stream, I run good after the stream. So that's fine. And if I run good on stream, I usually <laughs> fuck it up afterwards. No one is playing cash games in Lithuania, only Tony G. I mean, there are some professionals, definitely, I think, but, you know, it's like no one is playing the highest, highest stakes, I think, like the Triton ones or whatever, but as I said, I have no idea about the cash world. Uh, I think it's because the variance is so low, right? You don't need that much, that huge of a bankroll, right? Variance is low. You you don't need a community around you to like be good and profitable. So that's probably why I don't know that many cash players. I mean, that's one of the key factors. What is up with the, those isos? I don't have anything to call it. What sample size is reasonable to get an accurate GPV? Uh, I think like if you want to be really precise, ten thousand games. Yeah, but I think you can do good assumptions from three, four thousand games. Like especially if you play like two tables or less. Uh, if you play two tables, right, you focus on every table a lot, right? Then you know that you're what's your thought process. So three thousand games should give you a good example of that. I mean, especially in the lower limits, right? So unlucky. Did nothing wrong in this game and we still lost quite a lot. Chips. But yeah, it, I mean, if on Luna Max, at least 5,000 probably would be decent. Some people would disagree and say that you need at least 20,000 or so, but that's, I don't think that's, that's bullshit. 10,000 is more than enough, but you can definitely make good assumptions based on a couple of thousand games. As long as it's not like 500 games or 1000 games, it should be fine. Hmm. I can show, I can call. Nice flop. The question is, should we be raising or not? I have a lot of equity, but let's, let's be aggressive. We're out of position, so that's the problem. It's a really aggressive line. Oh my god, he had that 10, seriously. He called with it. <clears throat> Sucks. Do you know how long does it take on average to move from micro sticks to 25s or 50s in your stable? So if you're committed and you're like, I'm not, like, I'm not sure if talented is the word, but if you're not stupid, 
it should not take you long. Like for Marcus Strix to 25s, you can achieve that in probably like half a year. It's definitely doable. But a year, could be, if you're conservative, a year. And, and like 50s and 25s is quite different, right? It's like 50s is the lowest, like it's not mid stakes completely, but it's not like high stakes, you know? So it's like in between those. So you get players from both ends. So, but yeah, 25s is like, I think anyone can get to 25s, right? You don't need to be talented or really smart. All you have to do is like, just learn how to play and that's it. You don't need to make crazy adjustments. You can just stick to basic ABC strategy and crush the limit, right? So we're in hundreds and fifties, like fifties, not that much, but in hundreds, it's different. You know, you need a lot more knowledge and a lot more adjustments and so on. So, you know, it's different. Okay, he bets three blinds, 7.5 really. He never has bluffs, does he? Yeah. What do you call with Jack? Unlucky. Okay, let's not get called by Ace King again, please. Let's say a player wins at five dollar limit. Can he expect a contract at your school if he's hardworking, honest? What would be the length of a contract? So. You can, you, I mean, you can show a graph of, I'm not sure, maybe it's not the case anymore, but at least you show a good graph and, mod, and you're motivated at like 25 cent games, you can expect a contract, right? But, so that's not, the limit is not a problem as long as you're beating it, or at least you're mo motivated to beat it, right? But yeah, uh, the better in the sample and higher limits, the better the contract is, easy as that. But if you're just basically new, it's a 50-50 contract for probably like, I, I, I'm not sure the game count. It's probably 30,000, something along those lines. So, yeah. <laughs> 108 GP, minus 108 GP in 11 games. Crushing it. But at least we're over EV, you know. But I mean, if your goal is to play poker full time, not joining a stable is a mistake because, like, nowadays, right, there's no way for you to just start crushing on your own, right? You, need, you would need to be incredibly talented. You would need uh, to put in a lot of hours of studying and even then, like you would need to buy private coaches and so on. So and you would, you, ha you, could, you need an insane bankroll management and so on. So it's way harder. So not joining a stable is just not smart basically.
He was really close, but... Let's get some fishes. Uh, I don't want to play against regs. That's running good against me. Every single game is losing. Also, Carla, I guess we have played in the past. Oh wow, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, did you change your nickname? But yeah, we definitely played, and I I, rem I remember that you were quite toxic. We'd always show like the sh the cards, especially when you bluffed. And I definitely did not expect to see you here. But did you change the nickname or what? Or you uh, switch the sites? Is there a time limit to play those thirty thousand games? And uh, no, there is no. Th I mean. Uh, I think in the contract it says that you need to play at least 400 games during the month or so, right? But it's like the bare minimum and like no one will... Uh, you, you won't need to pay a fine if you skip one month or whatever, you know, everyone has a vacation or whatever. So there's no time limit, you know. And I think it's that's the best part, that it, like it's fine. What is the max amount of tables do you play? My head is spinning while playing four tables. So, I, the most, and like, I only play now. Now I only play six tables. I don't switch between five or six. I only play six tables, and but I never play more. It, it's just not worth it, I think, in regular format. Maybe if I would play hundreds right now, I would have, like, I would try to get a better spot in the field, right, and try to push other regs out. I would, I maybe try to play eight, but even if I wanted, I need to buy a new monitor for that because now, like, my monitor is perfect for six tables, but for eight tables, it's just a bit too small. It fucks everything up. Oh, you switched to Billy Oak. Wow. Cash. And do you mind, like, sharing how that happened or, like, why did you switch and is it profitable and do you do it do you do it online or live that's what i'm curious about it but yeah <laughs> yeah so someone asked in the beginning of the stream like do people switch from uh from like spins into entity or cash. But yeah, here's an example. Someone switched it. Come on. That was something weak for once. Don't you dare folding. Nice, finally. Will this be one of the few profitable games we have during the stream? Mm. 
The 3 7 was a call, but. Sometimes I feel like, especially during the stream, I forget the ranges completely. And I play like a fish from 5 essence or whatever. Okay, let's call. Really hate these spots. Especially when you continue battling, but. Online, I have 17 EV big blind. And the last 200 grams of Kilo, yo, 200. Okay. So what is that? In profit terms, of 200 hands. Shoves, really? Seventeen big blinds. But yeah, yeah. It seems like I, I, I have no idea how that works. Like it's so hard for me to like to take into account how how much profit is that and how many hands you can play during the. But yeah, I think I think it's a crush. So it's, you stick to it because I think it's more profitable, right? So now you're doing 10k easy, and on which side you're playing? As well. But yeah, I mean, good for you, man. Good for you. But now I, I think doing consistently 10k a month is still doable i mean but yeah you know for if you found what's what works for you good for you man good for you um kaip yra šatskas žaidžias gerai lengvai nesunkus aparant Leo spins are probably fun. I, I never tried them. I mean, maybe I played one or two, but the, the lack of action is what the problem with them. So, you know, like it's, it would probably be fun and maybe more profitable even, but there's just no action based to them. So. And I only, I, I, only, I, th I think only focus those have them. I'm not sure maybe GG has them too, but either way, but. But yeah, it's quite a strange way to switch, like, you were breaking even for four or five months. What was your chiffy before you quit? I'm just curious. About what bot are you talking about? And how can you be so sure because there's not like there's not a like public database right where you can just see everyone's results oh yeah well, expected that you need to switch a lot i'll be aggressive If he's going to call me with a deuce or a six, I will be pit. Ah, seven. Okay, that's fine. All good. You know, 10k spins is doable but requires a lot of line work. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. I mean, it really comes down to, like, some people do it in 25s, you know, they play 6-8 tables, 
like above 6,000 games a month and they do 10,000, 10K consistently every month almost. So, you know, even in 25s, I'm not sure how consistent you can be in hundreds now, like doing 10K if you're not like pushing 300 hours or so. But yeah, but, but maybe I'm just not good enough to crush them or maybe just mental gap, you know. Okay, let's play the last game of today. Hmm. Okay, let's float here. What? Oh, you sent a graph? Hold on. Why cannot I see the top of it? Okay. It was 76,000 tournaments. Shit TV 55 and it was in it's probably most of it was played during the it, it's like it's both limits right 50s and 100s it's not like but yeah sick results man sick results tournaments among 3000 tournaments it was a nice volume too. So yeah, you were completely crushing it. What was the chip? I mean, you know, because I think the, the hundreds changed drastically. After the changes, or at least for now. Last one and a half years. Oh my god, he's probably beating me with a, me with a nine, but... I've never seen this type of graph before, so... Oh, okay. One and a half years. Yes, it, it takes some time to analyze this. Okay, in 50s you had... Oh. <laughs> What's surprising is that you had the same GPV in 50s and as in 100. 40,000 games. It's nice that you're sharing your graphs so willingly, but I mean, you switched the game, so I think the results are good, so it's not a surprise, but a lot of people, you know, switch, uh, never show them. Come on, for fuck's sake. I mean, yeah, but this was in Deadpool. pool. I mean, maybe, I, I'm not aware because it's quite hard to remember the results and I was not playing into a pool as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really interesting what you showed me, but I would, I, I would, it would be nice to see, I mean, I would not like you to get back into the field of spins, but, and I'm, I would be curious what chippy would you get now. Yeah. In 50s, I think it's now, it's easily achievable. To get above 50 consistently but but yeah the hundreds seem really difficult field wise now okay let's i'll answer the last questions and i'll i'll get going uh, does the school have coaching materials for students so basically the school we have a huge database of videos right uh, 
like all the introduction videos on the strategy wise then it's private coachings and group coaching so basically in group sessions which are like there's not that many people in them so it's easy to ask any questions that you want and you can always uh, share your hands right you can show your hands and your hands will be analyzed and on top of that you have private coaching right which are the most important parts of i think studying or whatever oh yeah you were playing during the morning uh, that's why i only played yeah, I had more fish games in hundreds because Rex didn't play me and I had my morning at the same time. Yeah, I, rem I remember that only I, I met you only during the day, uh, during the mornings. Yeah, but I was like staying up really late or switched my morning routine. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now I, rem I remember. I, mean, I play during the evenings and I mean, the lack of action now, I'm not sure how, how much I could, how much volume I could put in to play during in, in the mornings right because hundreds are seem like lack of action is really annoying and but i haven't played hundreds this month at all so but i'm going back to them next month so we'll see how that goes so yeah uh anyway thanks for joining the stream also kyle it's nice hearing your story definitely did not expect to see you here but yeah Thanks for joining the streams. Thanks for engaging. And yeah, see you at the tables or and see you next stream. Goodbye.